Welcome to The Daily Decrypt, the go-to podcast for all things cybersecurity. Get ready to decrypt the complexities of cyber safety and stay informed. Stand at the frontier of cybersecurity news, where every insight is a key to unlocking the mysteries of the digital domain. Your voyage through the cyber news vortex starts now. Good morning, listeners. Today is February 15th of 2024, and you're listening to The Daily Decrypt. Got a quick episode for you today. We're just going to touch on uh, three stories. One, DuckDuckGo has some new updates, which we're pretty excited about. A company called AppDome is reinventing geo-compliance for mobile security. And for the nerdier folk, the Bumblebee is back. This is a new wave of cyber threats, so let's dive right in. All right, so our first article comes from Bleeping Computer, and it discusses DuckDuckGo's introduction of an end-to-end encrypted sync and backup feature for their privacy-centric browser. DuckDuckGo has been a beacon for those seeking to protect their online activities from prying eyes, and it's known for its search engine that promises not to track users. Its latest update introduces a sync and backup feature, which allows users to securely synchronize bookmarks, passwords, and email protection settings without the need for an account, or by revealing any sensitive information to DuckDuckGo. We love this. This is a a huge step towards separating your identity from what you do on the internet. So what sets this feature apart is its use of end-to-end encryption. And for those of you who aren't super savvy in the tech field, this means that The data is encrypted in such a way that only the user can access it, not even DuckDuckGo can peek into the transferred information. This ensures that personal data like passwords and bookmarks remain private and secure, which is a significant step forward in preserving user privacy online. DuckDuckGo employs local encryption to store sensitive data on the user's device. And during synchronization between devices, this data remains encrypted. And because the decryption key is stored locally on your devices, your information is inaccessible to anyone but you. The little caveat to that is your information is inaccessible to anyone but you or anyone who has access to your devices. Make sure your devices are password protected and go to sleep or lock after a reasonable amount of time. One minute might be too quick, five minutes might be too quick, but get in the habit of locking your devices when you walk away from them. Another feature of this is the easy setup. Users can sync their data by scanning a QR code or entering a text code, bridging their digital life across Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android devices seamlessly. DuckDuckGo provides recovery codes in a PDF document, ensuring that users can retrieve their data even if their device is lost or stolen. We don't love QR codes overall, but if it's being provided by DuckDuckGo, you should be pretty safe. Attackers will also have this information, so they might try to generate fake QR codes or fake PDFs, but I've never really seen syncing across devices without creating an account. So I'm pretty excited to give this a try. If you're also excited to give this a try, the DuckDuckGo browser is available for download on various platforms. Though the browser is still in beta, it's still very accessible. So go out there, give it a shot, and let us know what you think on Twitter or Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. So up next, we're talking about a company called AppDome, which might be behind many of your apps already on your phone. They provide security features for apps across Android and iOS. This can mean security features such as end-to-end automation, mobile app security, anti-fraud, anti-malware, anti-cheat, anti-bot, and geo-compliance. Their sites are focused on the geo-compliance part of that. They've come up with a groundbreaking feature set, which is designed to help mobile brands verify user locations and detect fraudulent activities such as location spoofing or fake GPS app usage, VPNs, and SIM swaps. These are common methods that are often employed to bypass geographical restrictions in mobile applications, which can pose a significant challenge to maintaining the integrity of mobile commerce and transaction data. This is great, but... I have to point out the irony of discussing this right after talking about not being tracked online by DuckDuckGo. Geolocation is a tough thing to nail down. IP addresses are wildly inaccurate. And yeah, your location can be mapped using different apps like VPNs or all kinds of other things. So this is huge for government regulation of data privacy, but might be bad news for 
protecting yourself and your privacy online. Tom Tovar, who is the CEO of AppDome, discusses the struggle mobile brands face in achieving true geo-compliance. Traditional products in this space have suffered from a fragmented approach requiring complex software development kit integrations and a heavy lift from engineering teams. Solution? A unified, automated platform that integrates geo-compliance with over 300 other mobile app defense features, streamlining the process and ensuring compatibility across the board. This next piece is drawing attention to a recent activities of the notorious malware loader and initial access broker known as Bumblebee. Bumblebee is back, and its resurgence is marked by a sophisticated phishing campaign targeting U.S. organizations with cleverly disguised voicemail-themed lures leading to malicious OneDrive URLs. So watch out for suspicious-looking voicemails, and if you do happen to click on one, if it opens OneDrive, you know what to do. Proofpoint, an enterprise security firm, has traced these activities, noting that the malicious URLs guide unsuspecting victims to a Word document that impersonates the consumer electronics company Humane. That's not very humane of them. These documents, named in a deceptive manner like Release Evans hashtag 96 dot doc, employ VBA macros to execute a chain of commands that eventually download and run the Bumblebee loader. This development is particularly alarming considering Bumblebee's reputation for downloading and executing ransomware, among other malicious payloads. Bumblebee has first identified in March of 2022 and has been a tool for various crimeware actors, replacing older loaders such as Baza Loader. Its development is suspected to be under the wings of the Conti and TrickBot cybercrime syndicates, showcasing a continuous evolution in cybercrime tactics. Interestingly, the return of Bumblebee coincides with the reappearance of malware variants like Quackbot, Zloader, and Pikabot, which is highlighting a broader wave of cyber threats. There's a lot of vulnerabilities that involve Microsoft Office macros, so keep an eye out for a Office template you might download for free on the internet that when you open it, it prompts you to enable macros. It is going to try to convince you that you need to enable these macros to use this template. But I would advise against enabling macros since that pretty much gives the Word document the ability to launch other programs, to run code, to do anything that malware would need to do. Download a template, it asks you to enable macros, probably delete that template and look on a different site. Microsoft has also taken steps to disable macros in an unsecure way, but there's always ways around it. The article we're referencing also touches on a broader context, with Malwarebytes uncovering phishing campaigns that mimic financial institutions, tricking individuals into downloading legitimate remote desktop software like AnyDesk under false pretenses, further enabling cybercriminals to exploit unsuspecting users. All right, so that's all we got for today. Thank you so much for listening. Give us a tweet if you like what you've heard. We'd love to hear from you. On Instagram, we're posting little highlight reels. And uh, yeah, your recommendation means a lot to us. So send this podcast to a friend if you thought it was fun or valuable or anything. Talk to you more tomorrow. <laughs>